Greetings, beloveds. This is Amy Karen Johnson, or Cosmic Earth Amy, and I am here with you today with the first of a three-part series about the crown center and its three gates. So I would like to show you what I'm talking about when I say crown center by showing you an illustration in my book as I have done before. Of course, this book is about the heart center and these are very similar to chakras. And so if you're familiar with chakras, the crown center is at the top here and it has three gates. And I'm going to be focusing on the middle gate today, the 61st gate. And I have chosen a plant to go with each gate. And in this case, I have chosen the eucalyptus to represent the 61st gate. And for each gate and plant, I have also collaborated with Mother Earth, Gaia, to write a poem. So here is the poem for this gate. Eucalyptus plays in the breeze, knowing it holds precious moisture. The breeze plays with eucalyptus, spreading its lofty tincture. So as a slight difference in my preparations with my next book for about the Crown Center, I did not use or record any ASMR videos or triggers in my first book because I didn't know about ASMR yet. So I may include these as links in the book but you can get them today for free. I have for you an amethyst with light shining through it. And I would like to help bring the light through this amethyst to you to help transmit to you the energy of this gate. So I'll ask you to follow it with your eyes. And don't forget to breathe. All of the gates of the Crown Center are associated with inspiration, which is accessed very effectively through bringing the eyes upward. So I'll ask you to again follow the amethyst light with your eyes.
also have lapis lazuli here. Part of the reason I associate lapis lazuli with this particular gate associated with the 61st hexagram, excuse me, I think I forgot to mention that these gates do come from and are associated with the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. And so these hexagrams are various combinations of yin and yang lines, meaning yin, they look as if they're broken, they have a little space in the middle, and yang lines, some may say yang, are solid all the way across. And so there are six of these lines and different combinations for each gate or hexagram. And so the six are made up of two trigrams or two sets of three lines. And these three line groups make up different elements, eight different elements. In this case, for the 61st gate, it is wind over lake. And the imagery we get here is that of wind blowing over a lake, a lake that is normally very calm, very still, and very reflective and glass-like, so that normally you just see the sky when you look at it. However, when the wind blows over it, you realize that it is not just a reflection of the sky, but actually has a whole other world beneath it, beneath its surface. And in this way, our own personal inspiration, our own personal depths, are revealed to ourselves. You may have heard the saying, I believe it comes from Shakespeare, of know thyself. And this may seem easy at first glance, but through this hexagram we see how it may not be so easy to know ourselves truly, fully, and deeply. So the energy of this hexagram will usually reveal something about yourself to yourself. And that's what I see when I look at lapis lazuli. I see something deep, something with depth, something more complex than it might appear at first sight. Over the last week, I've gone through a stressful period. It's been stressful for a lot of people, maybe you too, and got to a place where I felt cut off from my inspiration, from my inner resources, from my own wisdom. It was really only after resting quite a bit this weekend and reflecting on the 61st gate that I felt reconnected to my inspiration again. The breath helps, rest helps, and just letting go of expectations and the shoulds. I should be doing this, I should be doing that. When we allow ourselves to rest and then allow ourselves to act when we feel that inspiration, when we feel that impetus, when the thought comes to our mind, I mean that can be enough right there 
and sometimes we may resist and think that we need or deserve even more rest. But often when that thought comes in is the perfect time to act. Not always. When it's an action that affects other people, you may have to wait or need to wait for the right time. But when it's something that you do for yourself, often that is the right time. Or if it's something clearly needed by others. They say that necessity is the mother of all invention. And it's not the most romantic view of creativity. The creative impulse, the creative force that we can all access. Creative problem solving, it doesn't have to be beautiful necessarily. But that creativity usually has some kind of elegance to it in terms of satisfying a need. It could be one of your own needs, or it could be the need of someone else, or many other people. But when we allow ourselves to get present in the moment, to breathe, breathe more slowly, which is often something we need, we all need, then we tap back into that wisdom, that creativity, the invention of that moment and its fullest expression. Each moment, each and every moment is beautiful and full of so much possibility. It's much deeper and more complex than it appears at first. I wish you all a wonderful weekend, week, or night, whichever is most appropriate to you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste, beloveds.